Hit it. What's up, everybody? Hey, guys. We're back with some more West Wing here for you. Yeah, episode nine of season one of the West Wing. Yeah. Um, at the end of the last one, we thought we were treading on deadly ground a little bit by talking about how much we did not like the character of Mandy. <laughs> and We're not alone in that, apparently. Right, yeah. Uh, we were worried, and I, I certainly was anyway, that's like we're attacking one of the two prominent female characters on the show. Yeah, and it's not a dig at the actress. That's itself, the no. thing, we, right? We, we put that in Sorkin's hands. Right, yeah. And, and, and we, yeah, we absolutely put that in his lap. It was like, it, it seems like she is written in a way to be kind of annoying um, to, yeah, to, the, sure. to the audience. I, I know it, the role doesn't help that she plays the administration she's the pr guy that's yeah. like i'm in charge of putting a positive face on things so automatically she's less about policy and more about optics how does this look yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. so that's so that's going to be a little bit tough to overcome anyway but it turns out most people agree that mandy is kind of a weak link early on in the show here. and that's probably the start of the whole sorkin can't write women yeah and, and and i think looking at this and and, and that's fair, yeah. which is so weird to me because CJ is brilliant. Is such a great character. She's a character, yeah. It's weird that they're they're both really smart, powerful, capable, accomplished women yeah. on the show, right? Uh -huh. And one of them is so like endearing and watchable, and and you know you root for her a lot. And the other one is like sometimes just shut up. Well, to walk back on what I just said too, I mean. I'm Big part of CJ working is Alice and Janie. Yeah, I, I'm sure her you know? the way she portrays and delivers the character exactly. helps a lot. It, it does make me. I mean, you, you can't help but wonder. Obviously, we, this show is 20 years old now. If a different actress could interpret the words differently, I don't know. I still think I'm the writing sure. is pretty poor. I, I yeah, I, I, I think Maury Kelly is a talented actress and still is. Yeah. I just think she had a lot to overcome there with the writing and yeah. just didn't quite get it done. If that's what the case was, and we're not criticizing Sorkin's uh, writing at all. We're just no, saying, no, he's a great writer, but this this character was so. probably not his biggest hit. We'll we'll, we'll yeah, put it that sure, way for sure for sure. Um, and again, you know, I wonder if like Aaron Sorkin. Knew had or knew a PR person he just couldn't stand, and he kind of dumped that bile right He's onto the poor, on somebody, yeah. right onto poor Moira Kelly there <laughs> to put that to put that out there um, because it's one of the commenters, and we had a lot of comments on that, which we really do appreciate, yes, we do. Um, and we read all of those. One of them pointed out that part of the problem with her is she fights with everybody all the time, and that's her default and male setting. or female, right? That's annoying. Her default yeah. setting is to just argue with everybody. Yeah. And I mean, I know people like that in, in real life, and it's like, God, can you please just not be in my? <laughs> you can't have a conversation. With that you person. can't have a yeah. You you can't reason or have a conversation with yeah. them. They're just they just want the fight. Exactly. And I feel like that's kind of where she is. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, time. we'll see how it is how she is going forward. But at this stage of the show, yeah. like the last two episodes featured her kind of prominently. In in that role of I'm right and everybody else around me is wrong. Yeah, I mean, yeah it's, it's hard to, to, to we watch We're that. still at the beginning. Too, yeah, we're so. still at the very beginning. Plenty of room for drama. And both of the episodes were completely fantastic. Oh, yeah. It's just her part in it was just like, God, come like, on. Oh, here comes Mandy, Andy. stop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, we are at episode nine now um, on a almost flawless uh, television show. Oh, before we get going, we have a couple new patrons. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, please like to welcome and thank Marina uh, Parente and Mia Kelly. Hi welcome guys, and welcome thank to our you. little yeah. channel here. We very much appreciate it. I'm gonna close that out because I somehow need to pop up there. Uh oh. Close. There we go. Sweet. All right. For those oh. of you watching on YouTube, please like, comment, and especially subscribe. And if you're on Patreon, make sure you have your own copy ready to go. Yeah, absolutely. We're watching on HBO Max. Um, if you want to see full and through action to this and our other content, which is getting kind of extensive at this point, yeah, it is. Uh, please check out our Patreon in the description link below. Well, I'm not one to be selfish about credit. I think it is important to know that it is done and I did it. We did it. Yeah. Whatever it Claudia is, it is done. <laughs> Wait, Claudia. don't you want to know about the banging in your office? I've been on the phone for the last hour trying to seal a deal to fill a seat on the Supreme Court. Oh, there we go. It was okay. a pretty loud banging, Josh. The tracking camera. Oh, yeah. Who Who the man? Excuse me, Josh? Um, <laughs> who the man? You the man. <laughs> CJ, I'll let the press know that the president will introduce his nominee at an East Room press ceremony Thursday, 5 p.m. Can we do it on Friday and give ourselves more time? Thursday. Why? Because that's when people watch, yeah, people TV. watch TV on Fridays, yeah. Days? yeah. We're going to vet him four more days. I want to know every parking ticket. I want to know every girlfriend he stood up for dinner in 1953. Mandy, you're going to roll this guy out in a show that makes the Queen's coronation look like dinner theater. Peyton a... Cabot Harrison III. He sounds like he should be a Supreme Court justice. He sounds like he grew up rich. Jackson, Princeton, <laughs> Rhodes Scholar. We're finally going to have the last old man on the Supreme Court. Exactly. A smooth confirmation process. That's just optimism, Josh. Nothing bad. Donna man. is nailing this, actually. Yeah. Optimism. Look, there is no reason. And the, the ceiling, ceiling came out right. And, and yeah. you know what? He did that on the newsroom too. 
Did it really? Yep, the exact same thing happened on the newsroom to uh, Jeff Daniels' desk. That's hilarious. Yeah. The ceiling came out from underneath him. And it also didn't work out on the newsroom. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Well. It's kind of a sort. That's kind of a Sorkin device, right this there. This episode is called the shortlist. So yeah. <laughs> I wonder who's on the shortlist. I guess yeah, we'll find somebody out. else will be on the shortlist. Yeah. Exactly. Like who else is on the shortlist? That's what they do. Yeah. Bold prediction here, guys. We do not think that Peyton H- Henry Harrison the third, third <laughs> is going to be on the Supreme Court. No. <laughs> Did you even consider Mendoza? Mendoza was on the shortlist. Mendoza was on the shortlist. So you could show you had an Hispanic on the short list. Oof. That's not true, Joseph. I wanted a Democrat. <laughs> and instead, I got you. Oof. Wow. That's kind of brutal to say to the president. <laughs> yeah, it is. Three years, I would hope to be running You're for You're going to get beat in wow. three years. Wow. He's coming hard. He is. It's a little pessimistic, Joseph. Let's go start your retirement. Oh, <laughs> oh man. <Yeah. laughs> I really think if big chunks of the ceiling are going to fall down on anyone. I don't know. What? It should be you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I did now, not. Before I come in in the morning, I want you to test my office. Now, I would like you to play down that he's never written a judicial opinion on abortion or revealed his thinking on Roe. I'm already there. Okay. Man, are we hitting some prescient uh, topics uh, 20 no, years ago? Lillian Fields. Such a Why number out of nowhere, White though. House staffers were on drugs. Yes. Where does he get these stats? Leo. I mean, where does he pull them from? Out of the clear blue sky. But the- Five White House staffers in the room. I would like to say to the 1.6 of you who are stoned right now that it's time to share. Funny, <laughs> Josh. <laughs> we're not actually looking into it, are we? Yes. This is a joke, right? Leo. Yeah. I'm going to start you. To be questioning people, P tests yeah. and stuff. Yeah, it's a different America for yeah. sure. If you said that now, people would be like, "Okay, yeah, <laughs> some of them, some aren't, some aren't." And how do you know? Yeah, not taking drug tests. Why not? Because we're not. Toby, let's end this. Toby, Shut if up. you're doing this for a year and all we've gotten is a year older, our job approval is forty-eight percent, and I think that number's soft. And I'm tired of being a field captain for the gang that couldn't shoot straight. Do this for me. Put together some information on Roberto Mendoza. Yes, yeah. Reason we didn't go with him. The reason we didn't go with him, sir, is because Harrison said yes. Let's do better than that. Is it the drugs? No. What is it? It's Harrison. Yeah. Well, Saw this coming. I've spent the last three months reading everything Harrison's written, from decisions to memos to amicus briefs, Toby. He's the author of the unsigned note. So Sam has second thoughts, and Toby might not. I want to figure out what he did exactly. Right, yeah. He wrote some legal opinion that Sam's freaking out about. Yeah. You know anybody around here who uses drugs? Yes. You want to tell me who they are? No. Good for you. Consider yourself interviewed. Very good. I like that. Yeah. I've seen your records. People have a right to privacy. Yeah, and if it's not affecting your job. Yeah. Sometimes I can't find a space. What is wrong in this day and age with demonstrating that the White House is drug free? What is wrong with giving people that comfort? I would think that in this day and age, people would be more comfortable knowing that they will not now, nor will they ever be forced to turn over evidence against themselves. Mandy is really written to be the bad guy in a lot of these scenes, isn't she? She's the point of conflict. So what yeah. do you think's really going on? Because there's a basketball team called the New York Knickerbockers who are playing in town tomorrow. Are you talking about a basketball game? <laughs> Neither do I. Which is why I thought we could watch it in your office. Well, I explain it to you in a patronizing manner because I know that's something women usually like. <laughs> <laughs> he's talking. He's got something. What? Whatever it is, a small potato. It's just enough to get the rock rolling down the mountain. They were showing Leo in the recap with the going to AA and stuff. You think that's what he's after, is getting Leo to admit that he's a he's an alcoholic? I think so. I think it's about them trying to say, like, like Leo's if, an alcoholic. They're, they're going to have to go and ask everybody if they're if they're an abuser, and Leo's going to have to say yes. I, that's what I guess. But he's been sober for years, though. So. Right. I don't think it should matter. But. Paper is, in no uncertain terms, an argument that privacy is not a right guaranteed by the Constitution. Why? We can necessarily hold a 55-year-old man responsible Toby. for something he wrote when he was 26. We're not going to be able to hold him responsible if we put him on the bench. Thank I you. you. This issue yeah. is going to come up. I want to meet Mendoza. Yes, sir. Number two, he wrote the paper a quarter century ago. He hasn't changed his mind. We don't know whether he's changed his mind or not. We don't care whether he changed his mind or not. You're painting a picture for the president. I'm loving Josh in this episode a lot. Well, and the president's in the room. It's not like he's he, absolutely he's, right. He's, he's, yeah, painting a picture for the president. Yeah, it's in that's what they've been the doing, right? Before. Well, it's, they're looking for the guy they can sail through the nomination process and get a big win, he's but not, not really if he's the right guy or not. Yeah. Were you maybe into something that wasn't so acceptable? Oh, oh no. 
pills. Oh, that sucks. You're Leo McGarry. You're not gonna be taken down by this. That sucks for Leo. That sucks. Fraction of a man. Not everyone. The Constitution that. doesn't provide for a right of privacy. The right doesn't exist. It's that they had no intention of making privacy a de facto right. They just fought I, a revolution. They I don't, like, I don't like this guy. Yeah. These out. rights was Fat. to codify yeah. the most crucial of those rights, not to limit the others. Uh, that would be a thank you for coming in. Yeah, that'd be like so you can just pass whatever your law you want is just as long as the Bill of Rights doesn't say you can't do it specifically. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think we have much to talk about after that. But right? Okay, yeah, thank you. You're not the one. They don't. They don't mention the internet. <laughs> you know, in the Constitution. Josh said you like goldfish. <laughs> I don't think, she has a great laugh. The cracker is standing. <laughs> that you have at a party. I like them too. <laughs> We all know you need me as much as I need you. I read the same polling information you do. You're out the door, kid. Yeah, see you later. Seven to ten point bump. Now you have me taken to school by some kid. Yikes. That Sam is young drives me nuts, too. But this is really about abortion. He already it's told us. It's not about abortion. It's about the next 20 years. Those two decades are going to be privacy. Yeah. I'm talking about the Internet. Thank yes. you. So yes. I'm talking about health. Man, he nailed this. He sure did. Not. Let's meet Mendoza. Please, let's meet Thank Mendoza. God, Toby's let's on board Mendoza. Now, yeah. I think Mendoza would make a great justice. I think he makes a lousy nominee. Why? He's ruled in favor of same-sex marriages. He didn't rule in favor. God, of he didn't age. This does not age well. <laughs> he ruled that the state has no right to interfere with it. Mendoza attended PS one thirty eight. Oh no, a public City school guy. University yeah. of New York God, and a New what? York Police Academy. He's brilliant, yeah. decisive, yeah. He's passionate, got life and experience. experienced. Yeah. You don't think. That he's America's idea of a jurist, right. then you don't have enough faith in Americans. It's not Americans okay. that don't have faith in Josh. It's the White House senior staff. See, Josh is winning me over hard in this episode you. all the way. <laughs> Whatever. The brilliant Mr. Edward James. Oh, yes. You look very familiar. Is it possible we've met? I caddied for three summers at Sandy Hook, sir. Of course. Charlie Young. Charlie. Did you have a drink yesterday? No, sir. You're going to have one today? No, sir. That's all you ever have to say to me. Yeah. What would you say of someone being fired for refusing to take a drug test at the order of the president? Without showing cause, I would say that the order constitutes an illegal search. And I would order that the employee be reinstated. Well, this fits in in multiple levels with this episode. Yes, it does. I'm surprised you to learn that for the past few months, your name has been on a short list of candidates for the bench. Yes, Mr. President. I am naming you as my nominee to be the next Associate Justice of the United States Supreme Court. Mr. Justice Mendoza! What's his face still there? Chilling in the green room? I hope so. <laughs> Man. Fantastic episode. Uh, that was probably, you know, we're only nine in, obviously. I think that was the best written episode that we've seen so far out of so. all of them. You know, it's funny. We say that almost after, after every episode. On a, lo on a lot of them, it's like, man, that was that was perfect. That that was one of the best episodes of television I've ever seen right there with the writing. It gives you hope in humanity. It gives you we, hope in our, in our judicial, judicial system. Yeah, it, well, it was so well written. And as, as we kind of were like in awe watching it, they really nailed the issues that were coming in the 21st century, right? They called it. They called it all. The, 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 <laughs> your right to internet privacy and what companies can do with your information. Yeah, I mean, this is like, the internet was around at this point in time. It I mean, was, it, it was. was. Nowhere near what it is. But, but so, still, with, I mean, they with social media and everything and, and the ability yeah. of people to buy and sell your data yikes yeah it's it's way more it's far more complex than just a surface level issue right. uh, especially today but they they nail on the head yeah you know in the 50s and 60s and for I mean, hell even the 80s it was a very fascist nation if you were if you really do want to break it down sure. that way um you have to progress you have to go right. forward and i think that's kind of what the what this is a great example of even the very beginning when he's talking to uh uh, what was the guy's name he was talking to in the very beginning? They called him a... He asked for a Democrat and he got him instead. Oh, the, the, the retiring justice. I don't remember exactly. his name. Yeah. He kind of nailed that on the head. Yeah. You need progress. Right. Uh, no, that was uh, a perfectly written episode of television. Sam, and, and Sam got to be kind of like the moral over, overhead and all this. But Josh was really significant too in terms of here's what's right, here's what's wrong. This idea of 
f interviewing people and forcing them to say whether or not they do drugs and, and to determine if they can turn around and fire them no. is is crap. Yeah, um, it, it is crap. And also, um, the whole thing, the, the taking shots at Leo. I want to see if they do follow up with that. You know, no, oh, they will. That's going to be an issue. They're going to have to. Sure. I mean. Bartlett said it himself. Someone's going to get subpoenaed. They they they, they mentioned the yeah. word more than once there. Someone's going to get dragged in front of a committee, yeah. and it'd probably be Leo, and be questioned about: Do you do? Have you done drugs? Have you not? Yeah. not for any legal reason against him, but just to embarrass the, for the American people. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, but, look, but Bartlett said it. Look, look at his accomplishments. Look at right. all he has done with right. his career, and he's not going to have a drink. He's, yeah. he's on the wagon. He's fine. Like, yeah. They're, 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 it's 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 digging for bad press. One of the most interesting things about the show is they are a year into this presidency, and. Uh, <laughs> they're hitting quite a few speed bumps. Yeah. It's not smooth sailing. For yeah, they mentioned the forty-eight percent approval rating, which yeah. isn't great, He's especially got a early on. Battle to, right to, to, to win because you, you know you got hit trying to get Mendoza in, who you, let's face it isn't you know an ideal candidate that 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 certainly people on the right are going to love. Yeah, I mean, but we, we see Supreme Court nominations now. I like that they announced that though. They're like, yeah. you're not just getting them in there for your presidency. You're right. doing it for the next 10, 20 years. Right. Yeah. So the, get him there till he retires. Yeah, yeah, they're thinking about the long road there. So and they should with Supreme Court justice. Yeah. That's what you're supposed because to do. because each decade's different. Time, right. The times change. You know. Yeah, and it, the, you know, looking now at how politicized the Supreme Court's become, it's really important that we actually take these people seriously. Yeah, very much, very, very much so. You know, and there should uh, be a process for removing them when they don't do what they're supposed to do as far as the legal interpretation of the Constitution, but that's just my personal opinion. Certainly, yeah. certainly, yeah. When, certainly when you're certainly when you're asked in a confirmation hearing, do you think you can overturn Roe versus Wade? You say no, and then two years later you do it. I think you've crossed some lines. Call me nuts. That's quite unprecedented. Isn't yeah, it really is pretty messed up. Um, yeah, this was as good an episode of television I've ever watched of any drama ever. I really believe that. Um, Man, that was great. And we still have issues with Mandy being the voice of the, the people you don't like. I know she's set up to be that way. But she had good points. She had, she, no, she she had, had, she had some good points. She did. It is going to be a tough fight. But at the end of the day, I'm starting to really think that the reason that she's there is that so Sorkin can have the, the punching pushback, bag on the, the other side. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's like these guys can't just talk to each other about how right they are. You have to have somebody they need to convince. And I feel like Mandy's the one that's almost always in that role right now of, I'm going to be the voice of the, of the people that you don't really want to listen to. Yeah. Um, which is going to automatically put her in that, oh my God, will you stop position, you know? Uh, it's like, Maddie, can we have time out? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> just, just time out for a but second. But man, her, her there to butt heads with Josh today really strengthened Josh's character, I felt like. He, you know what? He, Bradley Whitford shined in this episode. He really He was did. killing all, he, he was the man. Yeah, yeah, they said at the very right, beginning, right. he was the man the whole to episode. To go back to so. 1999, he was the man. <laughs> all right, thanks, guys. We will catch you on the next one. We'll see you.